broken money has led to a perpetual hamster wheel. The rise in civil unrest is everywhere. Um, and anxiety, depression, all leading to the highest suicide rates in our country. Yeah. Uh, but most people are yet uh, to learn that inflation is crippling them and that our financial system is failing them. That is a really super strategic subject of how a currency that is a proof of work currency or is backed by a real commodity like gold, it prevents you doing what the Federal Reserve does currently, which is just create a bunch of money out of thin air and spend it on war. It's a hope for a brighter tomorrow. And um, it's the first time that we've had the chance to step outside of an opaque inflationary currency. And yeah. if this, this move is for the betterment and to, to curb this inflationary system, dude, th then the tide has strongly changed in, in everyone's favor. Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Yesterday, I had the absolute pleasure of sitting down with two people that I highly respect to talk about the past week's events and politics surrounding Bitcoin. My friend Andy Louie, who I've had on the channel before, and Sam, a mentor and a good friend for upwards of about 25 years now, um, who I have credited for um kind of opening my eyes to the system of control that is our money system both of these guys sat down with me yesterday for a conversation that did not disappoint both andy and sam offer unique perspectives that you just don't get with me talking alone to the camera so stick around this is not going to be a video that you want to miss so welcome back to the show Andy, um, you've been on before, and Sam, welcome to the show. This is your first time on. Uh, welcome, and uh, we'll get we'll get into um, some big things that we've we've kind of seen this week, mainly the Bitcoin conference. Um, and I kind of want to start off with the the biggest kind of thing there, which was Trump's speech and he came out and said things like we understand it and the democrats don't uh we're gonna stop the anti-crypto army and elizabeth warren uh we're i'm gonna fire gary gensler day one um we're gonna shut down choke point uh yeah choke point 2.0 um yeah no central bank digital currency we're going to protect the right of self-custody and he's going to bring billions and billions of people into crypto uh bitcoin doesn't threaten the dollar the government's behavior threatens the dollar and um you know he said several other things i i think both of you guys watched that uh speech so I, I want to start off first first off with uh, you, Sam. Why, why don't you tell me what you thought of Trump's whole spiel there? Trump also promised a federal Bitcoin reserve. Strategic re reserve, yeah. Yeah, and he mentioned that in the context of gold, silver, platinum i i think he identified bitcoin as the ninth largest asset class on planet earth today um yeah so, which so, is is crazy because it's only been around 15 years so yeah he did yeah. make some points that you know he kind of he kind of knew what he was talking to to a certain extent i think so yeah my overall impression of Trump's speech was it was, you, you know, you have to watch Trump in context, I think, with RFK Jr., who I had just watched his interview. 
um, there in Nashville. And Trump came off a little heavy on the politics and a little bit light on the philosophy and background of Bitcoin and crypto in general, whereas RFK was um, really a little light on the politics and really heavy on the foundational principles of yeah, the fundamentals. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, RFK just kind of knew what, like he, he RFK really understands Bitcoin, I think. So, and I, I don't know that Trump really does. Um, I think he, he hit a lot of, I, I mean, he hit all of the major talking points. Like if you searched, what are the words, you know, surrounding Bitcoin, like Google, uh, he hit every single point that, that we've like had issue with in the last couple of years, at least. So, you know, I don't know. He has, he definitely has some good advisors for sure right, on the issue. Um, Andy, what, what was your impression? I agree with both of your sentiments. I think he misses the mark on the culture. Um, the fact that he's talking about bringing all of the mining to the United States tells me he doesn't understand true decentralization. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, a choice has to be made as to who we cast our vote for. And for me, um, Cryptocurrency is what I see to be one of the biggest selling points for who, who would get my vote. And having sound legis legislation uh, to protect this digital asset is going to be huge in addressing one of the biggest problems in our country. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. The, one of the things he came out like right off the bat and was like, yeah, uh, two words summing up uh bitcoin america first <laughs> what does that mean what? which it's so it's it's i don't know it's it's irritating to me because bitcoin is for the people and it's for all people like it people. bitcoin is a borderless thing you yeah. know borderless transactions like you know the people like, I don't hate these other people in these other countries, and I don't think they necessarily hate us either. They might hate what we allow our government to do when we go over and bomb them and whatnot. But Bitcoin isn't a, na a nation, uh, like, a I don't know, a national uh, thing, you know, it's it's for everyone. So his... His whole point on that with like America has to be the best is kind of missed on my uh, yeah on my point of view. But he sold a good speech. I mean, it, it was nice to hear a lot of the things he was talking about. If I were to take it side by side with RFK, RFK seemed to have that deeper level of understanding. Yeah. You know, he brought up some great, great talking points about, you know, what happened in Canada with the truckers getting all of their assets seized when they were simply protesting. And, um, you know, had they had Bitcoin, they, they would have been able to pay their bills. Or if they really had to, they could have left the country in bed made whole. Well, I think yeah. they did. I think they... You know, the truckers up there actually did start using at least some of them started using Bitcoin for like their donations and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's a whole different yeah. topic. But um, yeah, RFK was amazing. Let's RFK took me all the way back to the days when I was voting for Ralph Nader. And you, you and me both, you know, the, the way these third party candidates, just every once in a while, you get one who's able to articulate the bedrock foundational principles and then apply that to the real world. One, an example of what RFK did is he put transactional freedom 
in the same category as the freedom of religion, the freedom of speech, the freedom to, to assemble. In fact, the freedom to have a dissenting view from your own government. RFK was articulating all of those with, in the context of a freedom, a transactional freedom, the freedom to do transactions, financial um, transactions, um, without an intermediary and without government interference. And I just, I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. So it's, it's funny that you bring up Nader, Sam. Um, Probably a lot of people probably don't know this, but you and I actually ran Ralph Nader's uh, Utah campaign back in 2004, right? That's right. Um, <laughs> and what's funny is I was thinking about this the other day, and so I kind of just looked into what Ralph's views on Bitcoin are. And Ralph doesn't understand Bitcoin, which kind of takes me back. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it it it's interesting for sure what what RFK was saying. And the the biggest thing is RFK's demeanor is so much different than especially Trump's. Is like he's very, you know, he's not out to attack anybody. He actually, you know, said that he was happy that Trump was, um, you know, a, a, you know, coming out positive for, for, uh, cryptocurrency and, and everything. He, he doesn't really go on the attack. And so it's like a whole different feel with him. Um, but I want to go back to the, uh, the point that Trump came out and said that he was going to fire Gary, Gary Gensler day one, because that was one point where the crowd pretty much gave him a standing ovation. Like they, I mean, the crowd just went crazy for that. And he, you know, it was funny because Trump was like, whoa, I didn't know you guys hated him that much. Hey, bro, on day one, I will fire Gary Gensler and appoint a new SEC chairman. I didn't think it was that unpopular. Wow. I didn't know it was that unpopular. Let me say it again. On day one, I will fire Gary Gensler. Whoa. I think he he knows that he has to, if he wins he has to you know stick by that I think because that was one of the biggest things that 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 the crowd reacted to. Um, no, there's that. Let's see what they do. You know they can they can say it all day long. Where at the end of the day we had just as much inflation during his his last candidacy. As we did, um, you know, as as Biden's, and right. if if the at the end of the day, inflation is what's crippling our societies, then having a balanced budget is very important. And that was one of the things that he said: "Is I will balance this budget." It didn't happen during right. his last term, right? Yeah, during his last so, term, excuse me, not yeah. candidacy. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think every every president since I think Bush have been pretty much on par with just their their debt spending, um, which uh, it it also goes to contradict his you know his statement when he said, um, you know, Bitcoin doesn't threaten the dollar, the government. The government's behavior and spending threatens the dollar, which I kind of sat back and kind of laughed at that because, I mean, he's he's definitely implying the the Biden administration because he's running against them. But his behavior and his spending 
were every bit as bad. And so in a way he was saying that, yes, my behavior threatens the dollar, not Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th there's a lot of major themes going on here. There's the federal debt. There's the federal reserve, right? And crypto and Bitcoin play into those. And then also personal freedom, transactional freedom, as RFK was saying. So when you start getting meta subjects that overlay each other, um, it produces a really interesting space for uh, analysis and conversation. Yeah, for sure. Um, there was one one comment he made that I actually uh, it made me smile. Um, it was when he was leading into talking about adding Bitcoin as a strategic reserve. And he yep. said, for too long, our government has violated the cardinal rule that every Bitcoiner knows by heart. Never sell your Bitcoin, right? For a politician to come out and kind of say that, um, you know, obviously he was he was talking his audience, but um, interesting to hear him say that. Never sell your Bitcoin. He did give a head nod to uh, Michael Saylor, which is yeah, buy Bitcoin, hold your Bitcoin. Never sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, he, he did say that he was going to add it to his uh, the strategic reserve, all of the Bitcoin that the government already has. Um, and he, he kind of went into how the government confiscated all of that Bitcoin. They've never actually bought Bitcoin. They confiscated all of the Bitcoin that they own. And he also brought up uh, commuting the sentence of Ross Ulbricht, which if you don't know who B Ross Ulbricht is, I know I've talked with you about this, Andy, but a little bit before. Um, Ross Ulbricht was the guy that ran the dark website, uh, the Silk Road, which you could get on there and buy you know, all kinds of illicit drugs and, and whatnot, but it was kind of, you know, just, um, kind of the eBay for dr drugs really. Um, so he did bring up commuting his sentence. The thing that's interesting with that is if you know anything about Ross's case, the, the government did not do their due diligence. Um, in in charging him they they broke all kinds of uh search and seizure law, laws on getting you know the the servers to the silk road and all kinds of laws were broken in prosecuting ross Ulbricht. so i think that's a pretty a pretty big issue for all of us um when it comes to our rights on um you know, due process, but I, I guess, uh, you know, what are your guys' thoughts on, on commuting the sentence of Ross Ulbrich? Well, I'm not, I, I mean, I remember now that you mentioned the Silk Road website, et cetera, but I'm still not sure where Ross Ulbrich uh, translates over into crypto and bit. Well, so Bitcoin was the uh, currency that the Silk Road used because okay. it was um, not that it wasn't traceable, but it was as anonymous as you prefer to make it. So you could you could actually buy Bitcoin pretty anonymously if you chose to and and get on Silk Road and and do your thing as anonymous as you wanted. So. Um, so the, a lot of the Bitcoin that the, the government owns right now was confiscated from the Silk Road. I see. Yeah. I don't see a lot there. I mean, it sounds like this Albrecht guy, 
Um, I have to admit, I don't know a lot of the backstory, but it sounds like he was doing some illicit activities and using Bitcoin. Then the government came in and used some illicit uh, strategies to collect evidence and prosecute him and then confiscated all the Bitcoin. So, And another big point is that they the government made an exact it was like a, a political case. Um, yes. And Chuck Schumer was kind of the big senator that was behind the whole thing because his constitu constituents were complaining to the, the him that their kids were buying marijuana on the internet. So he yeah. made it out to be this big political thing for himself. And they really set out to make an example of him and they sentenced him to life with no parole. So <laughs> then they then they use that, I'm assuming, um, to kind of give Bitcoin and crypto a black eye. So I mean that's it's not that's what we hear time after time from Elizabeth Warren yeah. and yes. uh J Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan. It's it's just used yeah. for illicit, you know, criminals use this. So definitely a black eye. Um, you know what, Drake, since you say that, um, I agree with the commutation because let's just say this guy was doing illegal activity and using Bitcoin to do it. Well, so they caught him and he should do some time, but not life in prison for selling drugs. Well, he should, he should do time. Yeah. If the government can do it within the bounds of the law. Yes, exactly. If you they can't, can't do the it within the, within the bounds of the law, they can do this to anybody. Like they can, right. they can dig up dirt on anyone if they choose to break the law. Like that's the big thing for me is if, if the government can do absolutely anything with, without regards to search and seizure laws, Yes. I, I think we're all in danger. So, yeah, with my limited understanding of what really went down there, you know, the one of the big things is uh, innocent until proven guilty. And he didn't get the fair shot at defending himself or having, you know, it, as far as I understand, they made a big example out of him um, and, and just threw him behind bars. So at the end of the day, you know, if they made that, Take, then he um he has a right to at least appeal or if, if anything a fair trial yeah well he's been he's i think he's exhausted his appeals uh i think he's been in in jail for 11 or 12 years now um there maybe 10 i don't know but yeah i mean it is it is a crazy thing. Uh, RFK has also um, pledged to commute his sen sentence as well. So nice. they, they kind of stand together on that. But um, towards the end of, of Trump's speech, he, he said a few interesting things. He, he called Bitcoiners the modern day Edisons and said right, that, yeah. you, you know, yeah. And and then pretty much directly after that, he said, have a good time with your Bitcoin and your crypto and everything else you're playing with and kind of ended, ended his speech like that. You in this room inherit the legacy of generations of American pioneers and patriots, risk takers and renegades who settled this continent, built the modern world and lived on the bleeding edge. You live on a bleeding edge. You do know that, Bitcoiners, don't you? You are the modern day Edisons and Wright brothers and Carnegies and Henry Fords. And what you do in your lifetime stands a chance to outlive us all and inspire humanity for generations to come. Thank you all. Have a good time with your Bitcoin and your crypto and everything else that you're playing with. So he calls us like the Edisons of our time and then pretty much equates us to playing with our own little Bitcoin toys over here. You know, have fun playing with your Bitcoin, kids. 
Hey, man, if he passes legislation that protects our right to custody, protects our right to operating nodes, um, we can be over there playing with our crypto. Yeah. Okay, so we're back. We had some technical difficulties there, but um, I think, yeah, we were talking about Trump uh, giving us permission to play with our Bitcoin in, in, the, in the toy room. Um, <laughs> but if, yeah, if that... He gives us the right to self-custody and the right to operate nodes and passes legislation for, for us. He can let, leave us to our our toy room of Bitcoin. It's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're not invited, Trump. Go go play adult in another room. No. <laughs> so yeah. uh, my next my next point was um, Edward Snowden was actually uh, part of Bitcoin conference as well. He had to zoom in because obviously he's not allowed in the country anymore. Uh, but it goes back to the um, to Trump saying that he's going to commute uh, Ross Ulbricht's sentence, but nobody is talking about commuting Snowden's uh, or pardoning Snowden for what he did. So I don't know too much. Yeah, he he does he <laughs> he definitely does. Um but it goes back to to when um when when Snowden happened Obama was president and prior to Snowden Obama was kind of preaching that we needed to protect whistleblowers. And then Snowden came out with with all of this stuff on the government sm spying on their citizens. And Obama kind of did a flip uh, and about face on, on his whole let's protect whistleblowers and was like, you can't blow the whistle on, on the government. So, <laughs> but I, I just find it kind of odd, I guess, that we would be talking about commuting the, the sentence of Ross Ulbrich, but we're not going to talk about Snowden. Odd, but... Um, and then I, I want to go back to uh, RFK also, uh, because I think we all saw the interview with RFK, right? Uh, yeah. And he, he did say that he was all in on Bitcoin. Like, yeah. those were exact words. So he's... I don't think he's all in in the way that like I'm all in. Um, he did right before that. He said he allocated a, a large portion of his portfolio to Bitcoin. So I don't think he's necessarily all in, uh, but it does show that, that he definitely has a lot more skin in the game and a lot more, I guess, understanding of what Bitcoin is and why it's so important um, than almost, probably almost any other politician out there. So do you guys have any thoughts on, on RFK being invested in, in Bitcoin? I just Sam? loved his, his speech. Um, I thought that it was great that he acknowledge so many parts of the culture but also the fact that he is invested says a lot um you know some of the other th things that he's touched on is um allocating as much towards the reserve currency being in bitcoin and and that gives us such a huge gold stamp globally as to the legitimacy of this asset yeah, I, I completely agree, Andy. And what's really come out of politics this cycle, um, especially if you look at the Kamala Harris um, press release that uh, Drake sent over, is um, good news, then there's good news, and for dessert, there's more good news, right? Um, and I really rank those uh, those three 
those three political machines, um, kind of the way, the way that you were just getting on to, Andy, is um, Kennedy is amazing. He understands the philosophy. He's pledging that he has skin in the game. He's pledging to back the U.S. dollar with assets going forward, rolling it out 1%, 2%, building up to a backed, an asset-backed dollar instead of a Federal Reserve illusionary dollar system. So you've got to go with RFK number one. And then I think the, 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 the loser in the group, if you want to say that, is uh, the, the group that has the most trouble now with the SEC, right? The Biden administration has been difficult for the crypto world. They're coming out of that now, but you can't quite give them full credit yet. And then kind of in the middle is Trump, who he likes to play with toys too, just like everybody else. Um, so you kind of have to rank them one, two, three in that regard. And, uh, but, but the big picture is it's good news, ladies and gentlemen, the, the worst players being the SEC today are getting better. And the other two guys are awesome and at least medium, right? Right. Yeah. I, I, I hate that we're using this as such a huge tool to get to get votes i hate that this is a platform for them which at the end of the day again i i really do think that rfk gets it and that is the big difference for me in that in in the other two parties is i feel like they are stunting to a certain degree or yes. playing to the crowds to be able to get these votes now talking about um you know the most recent um information I read on Kamala Harris and, and the Democratic Party is that they are shifting as fast as they can exactly. to try and get some kind of positive, um, you know, selling point for the crypto community, because what we've got 50 million voters now and something they can no longer ignore. Yeah, right. Well, there are there are a lot of Democratic um, senators and and Democratic politicians that are pro crypto we've got ro Khanna, um uh richie torres i mean there's there's a bunch that have been pro crypto for a long time and they're coming out and they're they're trying to convince the administration the biden administration and now they're they're really that letter that they've they've sent a letter to kamala harris um you yes. know saying that this is not a partisan issue this this needs to be something that we all embrace. And, you know, it goes, it goes back to your point, Sam, that all of this is good news for, for Bitcoin, because now yeah. we're starting to see everybody kind of start to get behind it, where I think for a long time, they've seen it as a threat and maybe rightfully so, um, because it does take away power and distributes it back to the people. Um, so in that way, I think it does kind of threaten their power. Uh, but I think, you know, with Trump coming out and, and um, saying that he's pro crypto, it's kind of forced that issue because now you can't be anti crypto. Like it is so unpopular and it's, it's not going to win you votes. Um, so yeah, and that's a huge win. That is a big win for all of us. Yep. So the in the the big picture, guys, I I don't know what to do, but I've kind of learned who to trust in showing me what to do. If that makes any sense. And right now, in the political sphere going into this election season, my bellwether is RFK Jr. And well, so did you, did you guys see this wasn't, I don't believe this was part of the interview that we watched, uh, but RFK actually went further in his speech at Bitcoin conference and said um, that he was going to, like like Trump said in his in his speech that he was going to use the current government holdings 
as a strategic uh, reserve, but that he was also, if he won uh, the election, he would also order the treasury to buy 500 Bitcoin every day until the uh, reserve reached 4 million Bitcoin. Which was their even holding with gold, right? It would be uh, Bitcoin and gold would be, I think, the same, correct? That I I didn't I didn't hear that point, but I, I may be mistaken, but that's still awesome. Yeah, I mean, I guess that would depend on what the price would be. I, this would definitely pump Bitcoin up, um, because four million Bitcoin is. If you take into consideration the Bitcoin that's lost, like the Bitcoin that's in Satoshi's wallet and the, the Bitcoin that people have lost their keys to, 4 million out of the 21 million is over 21 or 20%, 20 percent, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, the U.S. government, if, if that did happen, they would own... I mean, they would be the largest holders of Bitcoin in the world. That's amazing. And I, I don't know if that's, uh, you know, I don't think it's a threat because you can infinitely divide Bitcoin. It's not like they can just swallow up all this Bitcoin and then there's nothing going to be left and it's just going to kill the system. And it doesn't centralize the network either. So I think those exactly. fears are kind of uh i mean that's that's not really a fear with the government swallowing up bitcoin the only like i just have that gag reflex of the government owning our bitcoin <laughs> so yeah. you know it's it's definitely if if rfk won and he did get this in action and it did happen it would pump our bags our bags everybody that's in bitcoin now but those that aren't in Bitcoin yet would be completely hosed. <laughs> like the, wow. they would, they would lose out. Um, I think tremendously if if that happens. So I don't know if that's that point, definitely man, a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah, I think on that point is if if this four million Bitcoin is towards that height of change in in you know the betterment of humanity the betterment of fixing the money then it is a huge win you know outside of them holding that amount you know i think one of the things um i definitely wanted to say is that you know bitcoin is like it's a hope for a brighter tomorrow and um, it's the first time that we've had the chance to step outside of an opaque inflationary currency. And yeah. if this, this move is for the betterment and to, to curb this inflationary system, dude, th then the tide has strongly changed in, in everyone's favor. Globally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, I've said this to you before, Andy, I know, um, you know, even if even if people don't get into Bitcoin bef before it comes like mass adopted, they might miss that wealth changing um, gains that Bitcoin will see, but they're still going to benefit from the system as a whole. The The thing with watching a lot of the Bitcoin conference, I, I was a little bit disappointed um, because the guests and everything that I saw, it really did seem kind of partisan. And I know like Harris didn't come, uh, you know, represent the Democratic Party, but there wasn't much representation on, on the left for for the Bitcoin conference at all. Um, yeah. And furthermore, I, I was watching a video of the conference, the guy who organized the conference, uh, David Bailey, and he's wearing a vote Trump shirt and all of this stuff. 
and and then you have Russell Brand, like we were talking earlier about um, Andy, and he was, I mean, in in his interview, he basically equated Trump with being Jesus. Tomorrow, the extraordinary spectacle of Donald Trump, just fresh from his resurrection, just one earlobe down. I'm, I'm, like the conference itself seemed pretty one sided, pretty partisan. And I don't think that plays out well for us. I think we we all should be advocating for it to be a, a bipartisan, a nonpartisan thing. Nonpartisan, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah. So and I think it was. It was either RF, I think it was RFK who used the term libertarian, right? And uh, that's that's pretty much where I am. But yeah, nonpartisanship is what you want. You don't want to confute or get confused about where economics goes over into politics. You really do need a neutral um, eco economic foundation. Yeah. Back to the culture, Bitcoin is about you know, uniting the humans and creating a better system. You know, the, the our democracy is about division, about pointing fingers. We need to bring both sides together on this topic because we need global adoption to be able to, to take this as far as it could possibly go. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and hopefully... You know, hopefully if uh, Harris wins or, you know, you know, hopefully the Democratic Party as a whole doesn't have that knee jerk reaction of like, oh, Trump's for this. We've got to be against it. You know, that's that's kind of my fear is like, you know, anything Trump says, the, the left kind of has this knee jerk reaction sometimes. And it's. Bitcoin does not need to be that. Um, but it's it's kind of disappointing to see a lot of the crypto um, community are being so, you know, they, they're, they're kind of um, coming at this as, you know, well, we need we need Trump as our president because he's pro crypto. And I don't, I don't think that's what Bitcoin's been. Like we have, we have persevered through all kinds of things. Bitcoin doesn't need politicians. I think it's completely opposite. The, the politicians are finding out now that they need Bitcoin. And so I don't know. I, I just get kind of disappointed with people that think that Bitcoin needs one or the other. And I, I think, you know, they need it and they're they're definitely using it for their advantages right now. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know. Drake, is it fair to say that that what we need as Bitcoiners or as people who invest in digital assets is that we need sound legislation to protect what, what we're working on here and that yes. we're kind of at that crossroad where you know we you know we can't have somebody say you know it for myself i can't have a politician say you can't self-custody your bitcoin that changes the game for me you can't run an, or operate a node that changes the game for me and so i think that that there are things that we do need the politicians to get on board with because we need to protect what we're building. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I it, think even if they didn't, um, I mean, even if the governments, I'm under the opinion that even if the government tried to all out ban it, Bitcoin would still persevere. And, and the people, the people who need it, would find a way to use it and you know it would it would go on but it would definitely hamper like the global adoption for sure and and so yeah. it would well, hamper bro, they, they, it would they hamper the yeah yeah for sure yeah 
So it's not without yep. like, it's not like they can't or won't do it. You know, they've done it in the past. So I, I get your point. Like if we can avoid that, definitely uh, the way to go. But right. um, I think that at that point, we would see a lot of people that choose other places to live that support the lifestyle that they want to live. And so, you know, if, if they outlaw all of these things, you see how many companies and corporations have already gone over the borders because we don't know what kind of decisions are going to be made on our soil for legislation. Instead, I'll go somewhere where they already have adopted this and will allow me to, to create revenue by dealing with these digital assets. Yeah. Yeah, Andy, you're exactly right. And so when when you boil it down, a lot of what we need as a digital asset community is to be left alone by the government. That's it. That's it. Allow us to continue forward and we're yeah. going to make the world a better place. Yeah. So you you end up you don't ask the government for what you need you really end up asking the government just to to stay out of it um make i mean you need some foundational legislation that creates a legal and stable infrastructure right just like anything else but we don't need a lot from the government we need to be left alone by the government right right and i think a key thing to that is because you don't like it's called laissez-faire right uh laissez-faire exactly. policy like leave it be um and you wouldn't want that for everything right like you you wouldn't want a real laissez-faire um policy with banking uh and we've seen what that can lead to right 2008 uh financial crisis. So it's not everything that you can just take a hands-off approach to, but the key to Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. So you can literally leave it be and nobody has that hierarchical uh, power to really exploit that system. So... I think that's where Bitcoin differs from most other financial uh, things when it comes to, you know, that laissez-faire um, kind of stance on things. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Like, think about transportation or any other sector. You would be hard-pressed to recommend leaving the government out of it. But with the crypto and digital assets, you find that reversing to where it really is a good idea for the government to stay out of it. Very well, interesting. Part of it, part of it is that what the government has done is one of the reasons this exists. Yeah, right. exactly. the government created a real need for it, right? Yeah. Exactly. And it was, I mean, it was directly born out of that too. You know, Bitcoin was born because of that 2008 financial crisis. So That's it was kind point, of, it, you know, like, like Andy said in the past, it is the answer to the problem. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so guys, oh, go ahead, Drake. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm starting to feel like making a move. So I'm ready for my closing sound by Drake. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so one last thing before you go, Sam. Uh, like you said, you're, you're using um, RFK as your bellwether. Um, but I just want to bring up a interesting... Um, thing that Vitalik Buterin just came out with in the last week. Butali Vitalik Buterin is the founder of Ethereum. Okay. And he came out with this big essay uh, about a week ago that said, listen, guys, don't 
don't trust politicians that come out claiming to be pro crypto. Like I've seen this in the past in Russia. What you need to really be focusing on are their policies on privacy and, uh, you know, all these underlying issues. So I think that's probably a better bellwether than, than using any politician. Um, you know, look at their underlying policies on, on privacy and, um, you know, being self-sovereign and, and these things and, and kind of make your decisions politically based on, on those things rather than just taking their word on their, you know, them pandering to an audience at a Bitcoin conference. Uh, where yeah. they know all the talking points, you know, you've got to really kind of dig in and and kind of find out what each poli uh, politician is about. Yeah, I, I I completely agree with using stance on privacy and individual freedom, right? Freedom to do what you want to do within the law, and then privacy against other people snooping into what you're doing those would be the two biggest surrogate positions like if you want to know how someone will really behave towards digital assets look at how they have already been behaving with respect to privacy and security right right yeah all I will buy that. That's a good philosophy, Drake. Um, however, it still requires a lot of research and a lot of inference into, well, how does this candidate feel about privacy? How does this candidate feel about personal freedom, right? But all that said, dude, it's still just so easy to take the number one dude who you're sure really gets it and just watch what he does. So I'm just telling you at the bottom of the day, when you boil it all down, whoever RFK ends up endorsing, ah, you can see it coming, Drake. I see those little smiles <laughs> coming there. I, you Look, think he's going to drop gonna out and endorse somebody? When You know how these third candidates, party candidacies go? RFK will stumble along until October and then he's going to say, okay, I give up. I decided to endorse whoever he endorses, boom, gets my vote. That's well, it. I hope not. <laughs> and here's why is because I, I, I like the integrity that RFK kind of shows, you know, if he does that, I think a lot of credibility goes out the window according to you know what he's been saying but as you guys both know i have no skin in the game when it comes to politicians i i'm definitely not voting against any of them so i don't know what are your final thoughts andy you got any anything on that uh there was something I just wanted to press upon. I'll make it make it real simple, but it was, you know, kind of um, I'll, I'll just hit you with this, that that my beliefs are never so set in stone that the truth can't change my mind. Amen. That said, that said, uh, broken money has led to a perpetual hamster wheel. The rise in civil unrest is everywhere. Um, and anxiety, depression, all leading to the highest suicide rates in our country. Yeah. Uh, but most people are yet uh, to learn that inflation is crippling them and that our financial system is failing them. Yeah. And that was just something that was, um, I, just, I just took a few notes this morning and that was how I feel today. And so I think it's, you know, using your platform to to say listen man we deserve better this is what i think that is one of the major problems is unfortunately that does tie into politics and voting and 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 i want a better day for me and i want a better day for my family um 
outside of that, I want to thank you, Drake, so much for um, the work that you do educating us, for teaching me. You've changed my life in such a positive way. And also the work that you're doing with the animals. My brother, thank you so much. And uh, Sam, thanks for joining me today, brother. Yeah. Nice to be here, Andy. And uh, thank you too, Drake. Yeah. Well thank you, guys. Um, I think we'll kind of wrap it up right there but yes thank you guys i can't thank you guys enough for for taking your time and joining me i think it's been this has been a complete uh success on on this this uh talk with with both of you guys i think you've both brought in unique uh perspectives that that I don't usually get just talking by myself. So very much appreciate you guys helping me out and taking your time with, with doing this and look forward to maybe doing it in the future if you guys are available. So. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Keep doing it the way we're doing it, Drake, send out some resources and we'll, you know, me and Andy will be ready to chit chat. Yeah. Let's keep doing it. Thanks guys. Guys, I really look forward to doing more videos like this in the future for you guys. But as always, I really appreciate all of you guys that have made it this far into the video and have lent me your time to watch my videos. It means so much to me. And thank you. Thank you. Um, if you guys like this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And as always, guys, this month is just about over. So I am still kind of showcasing Flipside Sanctuary. Their website is flipsidesanctuary.org. I do have that link in the description. It's just an animal sanctuary, small animal sanctuary that really could use your help. So if you have a dollar or two that you can donate, they take PayPal, Venmo, they've got Amazon and Chewy wish lists, all kinds of ways to help those guys out. Again, that website is flipsidesanctuary.org, uh, and that is included in the description of the video. Thank you again, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.